A very good Friday evening to you. This is News at Prime. I'm Atami Gubeni. Now, as the 2021 flu season overlaps with the winter and, of course, the current outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, the National Institute for Communicable Diseases in South Africa has recommended that every South African citizen receive a flu vaccination ahead of the influenza season. Now, with the symptoms of COVID-19 infections being so similar to those of the flu, many people find themselves wondering whether having a flu vaccine can actually help protect them against severe COVID-19 illness. Are there ways to tell the difference between uh, the two infections? To answer that, as well as a whole lot more, we're joined by medical epidemiologist at the NICD, Dr. Smungile Walaza. Good to have you with us this evening, uh, Dr. Walaza. Perhaps let's start with the flu vaccines and and how they work around this time of the year people usually do go for their flu vaccines but you will agree with me it's a year like no other with the COVID-19 being in our midst true Tammy uh, thanks uh, to you and good evening to your listeners um so maybe just before I talk about um what how the influenza vaccine works it's important to say that Influenza is caused by a number of influenza viruses. So what the vaccines do is that um, after the person has received the influenza vaccine, they develop antibodies against the influenza viruses that were included in the vaccine that the person uh, received. And those antibodies are then there to help the person protect themselves against the influenza. And um, it's also important to note that it takes about two weeks for the body's immune system to um, to develop the antibodies so that they are protected against the infection. And um, again, so also, I mean, the, the, with every year, it is possible that the influenza vaccine does change from year to year because um, uh, the viruses change all the time. So if the influenza vaccines get updated, which is the reason why the, um, the recommendation is that um, people should receive the influenza vaccine every year. So we'll, we'll get back to the, the question about how they actually um, do work. But you say that the influenza viruses are different every year. How then do um, the, the, the specialists know and the epidemiologists know how to deal with a, a, a particular variant of the influenza virus because by the time the virus is up then uh, it's probably time to already start with the with the vaccinations is there enough time between the new uh, form of the virus and the vaccine which will be appropriate for it so um yes um countries do um what we call um surveillance in that we collect different countries collect information on the circulation strains each year. So what happens is that um, then we look at those strains and um, to, for the Southern Hemisphere, which is uh, uh, the countries that are in Southern Hemisphere, like South Africa, then the decision to make it, I mean, decision on what viruses to include in the, in the vaccine is made in, in, in September. And then the manufacturers start making the, the vaccine. So the reason for making that decision that late in the year is also to just to see what strains are circulating and also if there are um, viruses that are changing their, their structure, then decisions can be made whether to change the vaccine or to continue with the vaccine that was used that particular year. And then that information is then used then to develop the vaccine for the following year. But yes, you are right. It is possible that um, then Sometimes then the vaccine is not a good match for the uh, strains that are circulating for for the subsequent year. However, it is I mean the viruses, for example, the vaccine that we have in South Africa has got three strains, and now recently we've got one that has got the four strains. So with all those strains, it is possible to that I mean to get some of the strains that are matching. But it is possible. It does happen sometimes that it's, it is not a, a very good match. You, you mentioned that it takes two weeks in order for your body to start developing the immunity to be able to fight the influenza. Does this then mean that once you've already contracted the flu, it's too late? 
So, um, so that's an important thing. I mean, sometimes you do get people saying that they don't get the, they don't want to take the influenza vaccine because um, the last time they took the influenza vaccine, they got sick. But it's, it, it is uh, not possible. Sometimes it is possible. It can happen that when the person takes it, they're already infected. In which case, then that um, uh, episode of infection or of illness is not going to be protected by the vaccine. But remember that um, during the season, so the season takes uh, um, a, a few a few months. That then, even if the person has already had a, an episode of influenza illness, it is still important for them to take the vaccine because they could still be um, protected for the other for the other strains or for subsequent um, infection and, during that that season. Yeah. And what are the patterns that the NICD has noticed regarding the number of people getting the flu this year? Um, does it differ much to, to previous years because of COVID-19? Um, so this year, um, we normally I mean, have our influenza season during the winter months. And in 2021, also I mean, even in 2020, we still reduced the numbers of the influenza virus that was circulating. And again, I mean, but it's still 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 early days. But um, compared to the past um, two months or the later months of the of the summer time, we've started seeing more um, influenza cases. But the numbers are still way lower than what we normally see. But it still remains to be seen what the the season is going to be like. And what impact does the influenza vaccine have on on, on COVID nineteen? Is it advisable? Uh, for South Africans to to take the um, the influenza uh, vaccine, hoping that it will also help with COVID-19. Not directly, but we are um, encouraging individuals, especially those who are at increased risk of severe disease, like uh, for people who've got um, underlying illnesses, the elderly, or yes, I mean, or people who've got um, underlying like hypertension and diabetes and pregnant women. And the reason for that is because they are also the same group that is at high risk of getting severe um, COVID disease if they were to have COVID. And so by taking the influenza vaccine, instead of protecting them and preventing them from having a severe influenza illness that will land them in hospital, because we know that in this, um, in this group of people, uh, the chances of them having severe disease are high. And um, so the flu vaccine will sort of prevent them from having a severe disease or being admitted for influenza and being in a position to compete for gas resources, especially, especially during the time of the COVID, where, I mean, then they'll be needing oxygen or ICD admission. So um, that is why we're recommending the influenza um, the vaccine. But it is an influenza vaccine, so it prevents the influenza illness and not COVID, but uh, because they are interrelated and also the symptom uh, presentation is similar. And therefore, um, we also don't want to be in a situation where you try to say, I mean, is it influenza, is it, is it, is it COVID? Mm -hmm. um, and, how, and how then, doctor, do you discern the difference between the two? Because as you say, the symptoms are markedly similar. So the, the main thing that you're going to be able to make the decision, I mean, is, is if you do the test. But in terms of the guidelines, for if someone is suspected of having the COVID, then they have to be tested for COVID. So you have to do the, um, the, 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 the test for COVID. And also, so if you're not sure for influenza, um, under normal circumstances, I mean, we know that as part of general practice, um, we, um, clinicians don't usually uh, test for influenza, but um, they, in this situation, they can do the test. But it is, I mean, if the doctor were to suspect that the person has a COVID, they, they should really test for, um, to, rule out, to rule out that it is not, it is not COVID. Mm. But the, the main thing that differentiates between the two is laboratory testing. So the testing is definitely uh, important there. Before I let you go, Doc, would it be correct to say that by taking the influenza vaccine, it would somehow help with the severity of the COVID symptoms should one 
contract COVID after having taken the influenza vaccine? Um, I've not seen any data that um, that points to that. But as I'm, as I mean, as I've indicated, is that then also if then what we're trying to do is trying to prevent severe influenza illness in the person in the event that they get the the um, they get influenza. But again, if the person is vaccinated with influenza and is healthy and doesn't get um, sick or doesn't get sick with uh, with influenza, then maybe their um, responses to um, COVID infection will be better. But I've not seen any that data that if you if you're vaccinated for for influenza, then you do better in terms of COVID. Well, Dr. Smungi Lewalaza, thank you very much uh, for the insight this evening. That's a medical epidemiologist at the NICD, Dr. Smungi Lewalaza.